Cecilia P. Broderick. Canon Broderick, we are truly blessed to have you worshiping with us and leading our service. St. Joseph's family and friends, I present to you the Reverend Canon Dr. Cecily P. Broderick. It is a privilege to be with you all this morning. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of almighty God, our heavenly father, to set forth in his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship God, let us bow the knees of our heart in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts, confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, 
word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Open our lips, O Lord. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Psalm 62, 6 to 14. For God alone my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those in low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no, ex take no empty, empty pride. Throw the wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it, that power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. Glory to God and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Maureen, if you press star six to unmute, please. A reading from the book of Jonah. Chapter three, verses one to five and 10. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, get up. Go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 more days, and Nineveh shall be thrown, overthrown. 
And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone great and small put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people, but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your brightness, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion, the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, by night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The reading from St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter seven. We should read from verse 29 through to 31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even, even those who have wives be as though they had none. And those who mourn as though they were not mourning. And those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy, as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world, as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the gospel according to Mark, beginning in the first chapter, reading verses 14 through 20. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately, Jesus called them and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God of all power and might, I implore you this morning to send your healing graces upon Mother Ellis and Father Keith, who are both sick with COVID. Even as you send your healing and gracious mercies upon all of us and upon me, so that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart will always be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Amen. Come, follow me. I will make you fish for people. Jesus called Simon, who we also know by the name of Peter, and Simon's brother, Andrew, and other disciples, and Jesus bid them to follow him. For he wanted to make them fishers of people. He wanted to teach them how to bring people to the kingdom of God instead of bringing fish to people's dinner tables. At our baptism, and each time we renew our baptismal vows, we promise to proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. Peter, Andrew, the other disciples, in order to pursue their calling, in order to respond to their calling, had to give up their jobs. They had to give up their families, their income, everything in order to follow Jesus. When we are called by the church to proclaim the good news of God in Jesus Christ, we are not asked to give up anything. In point of fact, we are asked to speak the good news and to perform the good news on our jobs, to our families, and by how we spend our money. The good news of God and Jesus Christ that we are bid along with the disciples to bring to the world is the news of God's forgiveness and God's enduring compassion. We are called to share this news with our lips and with our actions. We are to make real, we are to effectuate the kingdom of God on earth by our actions of justice and mercy and reconciliation. We are to bring the kingdom of God on earth as we know it to be in heaven. Now God asked Jonah to bear witness to the news, to the bad news that the people of Nineveh were to be held accountable and to the good news that God would have mercy on them. The lesson that we hear from the book of Jonah comes right in the middle of this story. So it might be a good idea for us to begin at the beginning. At the very beginning, chapter one, verse one of the book Jonah, we hear God say to Jonah, go. God is calling Jonah. And God says, 
Go, Jonah, to the people of Nineveh, for I need you to denounce them right now. Their wickedness is staring me in the face. Immediately upon hearing God's call, what does Jonah do? You might remember it from church school. Jonah purchases a ticket on Norwegian cruise ship, not heading to Nineveh, but heading in the opposite direction. And as he's sailing with the crew and the passengers, it promised to be a bright and beautiful day, clear sailing, and yet out of nowhere comes a storm that threatens to sink the ship and take with it everyone who is aboard, killing all. The crew and the passengers question themselves and one another, what could have brought this on? Who could have brought this on? And so they draw lots to determine whose fault it is that the weather has changed change so severely that it threatens to take everyone's lives. And we learn in the book Jonah that the lot falls to Jonah. And they look to him and they say, what in the world did you do? And Jonah says, God called me to go to Nineveh and instead I'm taking a cruise to rest, to relax, to get out from underneath. Now, I don't know all the details of what occurs, but we do know that the passengers and crew with Jonah's consent determined that the only way to save the many was to sacrifice the one. And so with Jonah's consent, they throw him overboard. And no sooner does Jonah's coat get wet in the water than God calls a great fish to swallow him. And while this fish is swallowing him, we hear that on board the boat, passengers and crew are making sacrifices to the God of Jonah, are praising the name of the God of Jonah. Why? Not simply because Jonah was taken away, but immediately as Jonah hit the water, the storm passed over. And when the storm passed over, it freed their lips to praise their God. God ordains that Jonah should be inside this fish for three days and three nights. Who else slept in a death-like state for three days and three nights? Jonah, while he is fish food and worrying about getting completely digested, has a change of heart. He begins to use Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's stages of death and dying and begins to negotiate with God. Do we not do this? That when we find ourselves in trouble, we say, well, wait a minute now, God. If you just get me out of this, I promise to give up drinking. If you just get me out of this, I promise not to overdraw my credit card. I promise to speak nicely to my spouse. I promise to go to church on a regular basis and I will bring my pledge up to date. If you will just get me out of this. And so at the third day, God causes the fish that swallowed Jonah to have a serious case of indigestion and spit Jonah up. Where? Where else? The shores of Nineveh. With his vow fresh in his mind, Jonah cannot do anything else finding himself on the shores of Nineveh, but make good his vow to the Lord. Because didn't he, after all, make this bargain with God? If you get me out of the fish, I'll keep my vow to you. And so he begins to walk through the city of Nineveh. The city of Nineveh, we hear, is so big, it takes three days to walk across it. Jonah doesn't even get halfway into Nineveh. He makes a one day's worth of journey saying, you're gonna be held accountable by God. And the text tells us everyone 
from the king through the court down to the peasant to the barnyard animals puts on sackcloth and ashes confessing their culpability seeking ways to make amendment and pleading with god for their lives and for mercy what incredible things happen when we bear witness to the good news even the bad news of god and jesus christ that we are going to be accountable for our sins what we see in the book of jonah is that as he's traveling strangers are willing to give praise and thanks to his god because of what they see from his actions he volunteers to go overboard and the sea is calmed what we see in the book of jonah is those whom god has put in jonah's life the people of nineveh when they hear jonah speak of god's warning when they hear jonah speak of the possibility of god's forgiveness when we amend our lives and follow in faith where god leads the way they let go of their sins from the king to the cow in the barn and are willing to follow God. It is amazing. It is wonderful what, the, what a witness to God can do. I get to see it every Sunday except this morning because I'm with you. Do you know that St. Albans and St. Stephen's decided to host church school together? They figured by themselves they could not handle Zoom church school. It was going to be too complicated technologically, and they might not get enough children to say yes. And so they band together, wrote, rewrote the church school lessons so that they could present them in slide sets. And do you know, every Sunday, children between the ages of three and 15 gather on Zoom, about 20 of them with their teachers to participate in church school. Now, you might say, oh, sure, you know, little kids love church school. Nah, uh, 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 not so fast. You and I know 13, 14, and 15 year olds know how to sign on to Zoom and how to sign off from Zoom, know how to keep their cameras off, know how to not participate when they don't want to. But I am here to tell you that even the teenagers stay and participate. It is incredible when we are willing to listen to God and follow as God calls us and speak of God's love and speak of God's accountability and speak of God's mercy, that will happen. Now, as the story of Jonah draws to a close, we don't hear Jonah celebrating that the people on the boat were sacrificing to God and giving praise to his God. We don't hear from Jonah that he is overjoyed that the people of Nineveh have forsaken their foolish ways and are now ready to make up for the sins they have committed and to follow God faithfully. Nope, he's depressed, he's displeased. And he tells us why, as he tells God why. Jonah. In chapter four, verse two says, I didn't follow when you called me. I ran in the opposite direction because I knew you were a God full of compassion and gracious. I knew you were long suffering. I knew you were constant. And so that is why I don't, tr I don't talk to the people who follow Trump. That is why when it comes time to giving, I only give my money to the organ or to the properties. I don't give it to the general fund because I don't trust that priest and I don't trust that vestry. That is why I tell people what I hear when people call me up. They need to hear what I know, not what you have to say. Jonah has been called by God. Jonah was called by God to hold the people of Nineveh accountable and to remind them 
There was nothing that they could do. There was nothing that they could say that would separate them from the love of God. God calls us too to share the same good, bad news. Jonah didn't want to answer the call. Jonah bought a ticket to go in the exact opposite direction that God was sending him in. God is calling you and me. God is calling us to bear witness to the good news of God and Jesus Christ. Will you share it? Will you serve? Will you speak both of the accountability and of the mercy? Gosh, we are so ready to hold people to account, but not so ready to be merciful, are we? If you find yourself sailing off in the opposite direction to which God has called you, have no fear because we serve a God who is merciful and compassionate, gracious and long suffering, who will call us as God called Jonah again and again and again until we head off in the right direction and may even spit us out as a form of spiritual indigestion exactly where we need to be because God demands that we let people know that the kingdom of God has come near us and near to them. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, we offer to you praise and thanksgiving for the creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death and resurrection, and for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since we cannot at this time receive communion, we pray you to come into our hearts our souls and our minds. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until by your grace, 
we come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. We will say the suffrages responsively. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Give grace, O Lord, to answer readily. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of your Savior, Jesus Christ, and to proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and the prayers which we now offer before you for our members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Put your trust in God always, O people. With humble hearts, let us pray to God. Steadfast is, love is yours, O Lord. Show us your mercy. O God, you have called your church to be merciful. May your church be known by the love we show and the grace we speak. Our souls in silence wait for you. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. Show us mercy. O oh God, you love those who we call enemy. Transform our hearts that we might not wish for the destruction of any, but instead hope for the salvation of all people. Our souls in silence wait for you. Steadfast love is yours, O oh Lord. Show us mercy. O oh God, we recognize that we take your creation for granted. Forgive us and teach us to be good stewards. Our souls in silence wait for you. Steadfast love is yours, O oh Lord. Show us mercy. O oh God, we lift to you the hungry and poor of our region. We ask you to be for them a strong rock and refuge. Our souls in silence wait for you. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. Show us mercy. O God, in you is our safety and honor. Bless those who are sick and those who are brokenhearted. Give to all the comfort of your peace. Our souls in silence wait for you. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. Show us mercy. O God, even while this life is passing away, you are faithful. 
receive into your heavenly kingdom the dying and the dead. Continue to bless them with your love. Our souls wait in silence for you. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord. Show us mercy. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, including Christian McFarlane, who will celebrate a birthday on January 25th, Mother Claudine McFarlane and grandparents Yvonne and Cecil Craffy give thanks and praise for another year. Veronica Vasquez, who would have celebrated a birthday on January 17th, a donation was given in remembrance by her daughter, Dolores Brown and family. Abigail Sinclair, whose family sends this message. Happy sweet 16th birthday to our dearest Abigail. May God continue to shine his light upon you and pour out his blessings. Given by mom, dad, Justin and Jonathan. Faith Modeste, who will celebrate a birthday on January 26. Birthday blessings to a wonderful wife and mom from husband Klebert and daughters Chioma and Cheona. Elizabeth Riley, who celebrated a birthday on January 23rd, and Alfred Samuel, who will celebrate a birthday on January 25th, from Wendy, Carol, Anne, and family. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for Vanavi Delaney, who goes off to college on January 29th, 2021. We pray for Desiree Pierce, who is recovering from surgery and was recently diagnosed with cancer. We pray for Mother Cassinda Ellis and Father Keith Votes so that they may fully recover from COVID. We continue to pray for Joan Carrot and her family, the Adams family, the DaCosta family, the Durante family, and all those who mourn. We pray for Keisha McIntyre who needs healing. Rona Sutherland gives thanks for God's blessings and prays for everyone's health and safety. Olivia Gordon prays for peace under the new president and his administration. Tabitha Parrington asks for prayers of comfort and solace for her cousins who lost their mother on Friday. And Maureen Gray prays, may God bless us with an open heart, courage to believe, hope for a blessed future, and thankfulness for all who have provided for us in the past, today and tomorrow, through the grace and love of our merciful God and his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Roxanne Adams and family of the late Vernon Renison Van Rossum would like to express their heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to the St. Joseph's Church family for our loving thoughtfulness, kindness, and concern, which have helped carry them through their time of bereavement, especially those who called, texted, sent cards and flowers and prayers, and were present on Zoom at the homegoing service. They pray that God blesses each of us and his peace be with us always. And we ask that you include the following people and families in your daily prayers. Roxanne Adams and family, Trisha Archer and family, Ewart Adderton, Dwayne Bartley, Ernest Bartley, Irene Bartley, Idris Bryan, Percival Chester, Clive Chin, Lita DeRogine, Mother Cassinda Ellis, the DaCosta family, 
Edgar Francis, Jackie Hicks, James Hunter, Lauren J, Allison Jones, Jonathan Jones, Pamela Leach, Natasha Lovejoy, Janet McFoy, Mary McWilliams, the Nassib family, Dixie Ann Nurse, Lucille Nurse, Desiree Pierce, Basil Sams, Derek Sinclair, Father Keith Fotes, Zalika Walcott, and Violet Wilson. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubt assails us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide that we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Almighty God, help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both of our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in our community. For the blessings of this and all our days, we thank you, gracious God, except we pray not just this money, but also our lives freely offered in gratitude for all you have done for us. Use them both in this place and wherever you might take us. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for the immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Ken and Broderick, thank you for a very powerful ceremony. It was truly a soul searching and inspiring message. Brothers and sisters, I do hope we will rededicate our lives to the call of God and follow him. Ken and Broderick, thanks again. And you're always welcome at St. Joseph. Thank May God you. continue to bless you. Thank you. It is a delight to be with you all. I enjoy your company immensely. You are a truly faithful people. I, um, I can't help but notice that there have been in the course of this worship, 129 people connecting which puts you at a much more sizable congregation than either St. Albans or St. Stephen's on an average Sunday. And I ask you, what are you doing with that? I know, I know that you have an incredibly heavy lift with what God has allowed to happen with your buildings. But I also know that God has given you enough faith to handle that and a lot more. Listen for God and follow him. And you'll have no concerns for everything 
you need will be provided, even when you can't see it. Amen. 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 Amen, indeed. Amen. Amen. Miss Pauline, would you like to continue with the announcements? Meeting with the Bishop, Bishop Lawrence Provisano will host a Zoom meeting with the St. Joseph congregation, followed by Q and A. Wednesday, January 27, 2021, at 7 p.m. And we, you will see the meeting ID number and also the passport. For more information, visit the members page on our website. Annual meeting. The annual meeting is scheduled for Saturday, January 30th, 2021. Please be sure to register in advance for the meeting. If you have questions or need help, please contact the warden, Shirley Jones, and her number and email is listed there. Pauline Parchment, number and email also listed. Zoom Church School. I think Mother Ellis has talked to you all about this, and so I am here to extend a personal invitation from the teachers of St. Albans and the teachers at St. Stephen's to say that your students, your children are welcome. What they would love is as your children start to attend that at least one church member, whether it's a church school teacher or a youth leader, but someone whose face they know also signs in with them. And if at all possible to provide the names and email addresses that the children will use, we um, try to keep uh, Zoom safe. And so we um, lock out of the meeting anyone who might Zoom bomb or do other uh, inappropriate things to keep our children safe. So um, initially, even if you're not willing to share in the work of teaching, that doesn't matter. The teachers wanted me to tell you, it does not matter. They will welcome your children, but they want one of you to be there so that there is a familiar face for their children while they get into the process of making friends and falling in love with their fellow students and teachers. So here you see in front of you, um, the meeting ID and passcode. At the moment, this church school is hosted by church, two churches, but when it initially opened in the fall, we invited any church in the deanery to help us host it. It is the deanery's gift to itself and to its children. Readers needed, would you like to read a lesson or the prayers of the people during Sunday service? Please contact Joanna Valentine and her phone number is listed and um, her email address also. Pledge cards due, financial statements will be mailed out this week. Please remember to send in your pledge cards so that the budget can be completed. Reach out to Sandra Simpson, our treasurer, with questions. Um, to the um, to the wardens, um, I know that we are we are going to meet you know with the bishop. Um, this meeting should we ha have a meeting before we meet you know with the bishop, on that, that Zoom meeting, a, a parish meeting. 
uh, to prepare you know, for the you know for the meeting you know, with the bishop. Wardens? I don't think so because um the congregation has been asking about a meeting with the bishop and to ask questions concerning our church. So I think um, the members should have their questions ready to ask the bishop because you, you all know what is happening with our property. And I think it's in that regards that he will be there to answer questions. So uh, just a friendly suggestion to you guys. When the bishop met with St. Stephen's back in November, I actually had the vestry meet ahead of time and come up with some questions along, right. with, along with key leaders in the congregation. And I watched how it changed the bishop uh, and, and impressed him. Right. So, so I, would, I would encourage you to maybe have a pre-meeting identify some questions and then literally distribute those questions among vestry members and church members to ask these questions. Um, the bishop begins to talk a lot. And if you don't guide the conversation with your question, um, he in his graciousness, he in his desire to fix things, even though he doesn't have all the resources to fix every church's problem, may as he has in the past, say some things that he can't fulfill. So it's really important, really important.